Hey everyone, uh, I'm Basha Kaki. Welcome to All About Data, where I chat with some of my peers and industry experts around things uh, that they're passionate about around data and how data has made an impact in our lives. Um, I have today with me Ashwin Ram, Security Evangelist at Checkpoint. Um, so Ashwin's role is all about helping businesses make smarter move, um, smarter and more insightful cybersecurity decisions. So welcome, Ashwin. Thank you, Basha. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Great to have you here. So I guess, you know, just starting on a light note here, uh, given that your role is about, um, you know, helping businesses make insightful decisions around cybersecurity, how would you um, explain data security and, um, and your role to your six-year-old daughter Arya? Well, that's a great question. I think um, you start off by, uh, um, by explaining it in a way that's relatable to a six-year-old, right? So, um, so what I would use is, um, is uh, what is she really interested in? Well, right now she's into mobile phones. She's absolutely into using uh, games, into taking lots of photos of herself, um, photos of, uh, and videos, recording videos. So that, um, for me, when I explain um, data security, I, I like to refer to, uh, um, to uh, the CIA model, which is about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So <clears throat> when, I, when I talk about confidentiality, it's all about, well, who's accessing that data? And in the case of my daughter, it's, uh, it's really easy, right? All right, so you've taken photos, you've got uh, videos. Some of them may be a bit silly. Some of them may be, you know, things that she doesn't really want to share with anyone, not even her cousins, who she trusts quite a lot. So, so it's really about, well, making sure who can and can't access that data and, and having access control like a PIN number and, and making sure that nobody else apart from myself and her mom and, uh, and my daughter were the only ones that can see um, the, that, that data, that, that, those images. So that's, in a way, that's how I explain um, confidentiality to her. And then it comes to integrity, and uh, she's taken some uh, she's taken some videos, and there are, there are quite a lot of apps that are that are flying around at the moment that allow you to uh, manipulate images and voice. So so we've actually come up with some really funny, interesting um, uh, interesting um, uh, um, uh, videos. Now some of them aren't exactly. Um, uh, very um, pleasant. They, they kind of make fun of her, and, and so she doesn't like that. And so, so again, it's about integrity, right? So, so she doesn't want all of her images to be manipulated in that way. So, so that's a really easy way to explain to her what uh, what the integrity is—the fact that you shouldn't be able to manipulate that data, whether that's deleting the data or whatever, or making changes to it. And availability is quite simple, right? The fact that she just wants to have the the data available to her when she wants it. She wants to be able to consume it uh, wherever she is, whenever. So that's that's probably how I would explain it. Oh, that's a uh, yeah. Thank you. That's pretty pretty good. You've kind of you know those are like pretty complicated words for a six year old. But when you kind of talk about the mobile phone and what she's trying to do with it, that's that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to make it relatable. Absolutely. Um, hey, you know, so so moving on from your daughter to the organisations that you speak with. Um, what do you think the key pillars are for organizations to consider um, from cyber threats? And, you know, just as an example, let's, let's talk about ransomware, for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, for me, when I think of uh, ransomware, I, I, and, and from my limited time at NetApp in the last mm -hmm. six months, right, I think visibility is very important. And um, I say that because, you know, we, um, as a malware moves through file systems um, and, and architecture and encrypting files, the rate of data change increases, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we can, at NetApp, look at that change, you know, rate of change of data. And also if there were a ransomware attack, um, we could look at the last good known state of that mm -hmm. data, let's say, you know, with snapshot copies, and then retrieve that, right? So that's, that's how I see from a data management platform, you know, that, mm -hmm. that's how we could tackle it. But um, how, how would you um, describe the other key pillars, including visibility from an end-to-end -end, um, solution if you were talking about ransomware as a threat? Right, so ransomware, so that's an interesting one. Uh, and it's very prevalent right now. We're seeing, in fact, threefold increase um, of ransomware attacks right now in Australia. Um, so I think it's really important to to focus on, uh, on, on both 
pre-infection and post-infection security controls here. So, so making sure, well, first thing I would say is having the right mindset and the right approach, which is that you want to make sure you've got security controls that, that um, prevent attacks as opposed to those that are just solely reliant on, on detection. Okay, I'm not saying that the detection is, um, is not good or it shouldn't be there, it, it, it's got its place, but you start with, with uh, prevention in mind first. So there are security controls that are available for things like that. For example, you can use what we call CDR, right? So content disarm and reconstruction. This is where you, you take a file that's being sent to your organization, you've never seen it, you don't know whether it's good or bad, you haven't sandboxed it yet, um, you don't know whether um, you know how it's going to behave. So, so what you do is, as you're reconstructing the file, what you you scrub out any active content out of the file, anything that could potentially be used to launch an attack. By doing that, you're making sure that you're protecting your patient zero. Now, while you're doing that, in parallel, you should be doing things like sandboxing. Again, sandboxing basically just means that you take a file again you've never seen it before, so you wanna you wanna understand its behavior. So, so you um. So you detonate it in a, in a controlled environment and, and you study its behavior and you do it in an automated fashion. And, uh, and should the file be deemed malicious, then that file doesn't get delivered to the end user. If, it, if it's deemed to be benign or, or not dangerous, then, then you can have, the end user can have access to that. So that's, those are some of the pre-control uh, or pre-infection controls that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that organizations can implement. And it's really important to understand that you want to implement this as close to the source as possible. What this means is that you want to do this at the network level. And then you've got security controls that you've got to have on the endpoints. And this is where your EDR solutions come into play. So your endpoint detection and remediation controls. And, uh, and this is also where uh, you need very, very good forensics capability that have automated um, um, uh, um, actionable outcomes. So as soon as a ransomware activity is detected, um, all the processes, everything associated with that threat is, is uh, um, presented to the security team in an automated fashion. The, the threat itself is dealt with, remediated in an automated fashion. Um, and, uh, and so that the once that's done, the security team have very, very clear understanding of, uh, you know, what was that threat? How did it actually get into my organization? Right what was the business impact, right? Uh, meaning what files were stolen, what files were modified, and um, what, were the, what was the attack chain? What, is, uh, what was all the files that was, um, that was modified or, 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 um, or uh, um, accessed um, or deleted? And also then making sure that, that your security team understand the actual attack, attack chain. And I suppose most importantly also, was the attack successfully remediated? So that's basically in a nutshell. That's that's what I would say. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Thank you. So you know, I started with visibility, and you know, probably after the fact of the ransomware in the data mm -hmm. management um, solution, and you started as you know at the endpoint where the source is, and then looked at um, network sandboxing, plus also um, you know forensics, looking at. Um, um, what impact if there is any that's been done and whether it has been remediated as well right so that's that completes that you know the complete cycle isn't it um yeah um so so what does a good ransomware solution look like if you had to if you had two minutes to describe a good ransomware solution how would you describe it end to end <clears throat> again so, uh, so a, a good ransomware solution would would look at uh, um uh, at the attack chain all the way through so it shouldn't just be reliant on one technology right you need you need ransomware that is um, automated you need ransomware that's backed by threat intelligence so the ability to to learn from other attacks in an automated fashion being able to leverage artificial intelligence to to make a call on whether something is malicious or not those those capabilities are really important and also having having that visibility that forensics capability right because when you have forensics when you have that visibility it gives you what we call in the industry situation awareness right mm -hmm. what's actually going on in my network and then you've got to be able to use that information in an insightful way to remediate the threat right it's no point just having that visibility after the fact and being able to piece together the story but not being able to actually remediate the attack so, mm -hmm. so you've got to use it. The, the intelligence that you collect, your forensics tools collect, it's got to be actionable. 
So, so that's what I would say. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Ashwin. So moving on a little bit from, from ransomware to the broader you know, um, cyber threat uh, landscape that we currently see, um, what has kept you busy lately? Oh, wow. Um, so what's been keeping me busy lately? Um, uh, actually, it's interesting there to ask that question. Checkpoint has just today released a, um, our finding of a vulnerability, a major vulnerability in the Microsoft DNS platform and um, a vulnerability that actually would allow an unauthenticated um, remote code execution, which is warmable, which means that uh, that it can spread. It, if you compromise one machine in an enterprise network, you could essentially um, compromise the entire network. Uh, so, so it's a very dangerous one. Uh, the severity level for this is 10. Um, so that's been keeping me busy today. But, uh, but over the last uh, couple of weeks, it's been all about um, cyber espionage campaigns as well as ransomware. So those are probably the three things that are keeping me busy. The espionage campaign is, uh, is uh, particularly interesting right now, given the climate in Australia. And um, it was actually a checkpoint research team and our incident response team that, uh, that uh, unmasked a state-sponsored cyber espionage campaign going right here in Australia. We, we made this uh, information publicly available in May of this year. So. So yeah, this is this is this is um, this cyber espionage that you're talking about. This is in relation to the, um, you know, the announcement that our Prime Minister Scott Morrison made a couple of weeks ago. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Correct. That's exactly yeah. what I'm referring to. Yes. So yeah. we we we've actually not only seen attacks, but we've actually we're the ones that uncovered some of it. No, fantastic. Thank you. So we've talked about a lot of you know very technology heavy and you know ransomware and and um, all the threats that you're seeing, uh, which is really great. Um, you know, I started with how you'd explain your role to your daughter. Um, what's, you know, so going back to your daughter again, to kind of, you know, summarize, what's one more security thing that you would want your daughter to incorporate? Well, look, to a six-year-old, I think the most important thing is um, to protect them from cyberbullying. I think that is, uh, that is a, a very, very important uh, um, topic that all parents need to be across. Mm -hmm. So, so for, for her, she certainly understands that the pranks that she sees on YouTube and, um, and the likes, um, they're, they're not to be taken lightly. Uh, don't fall for it. Um, be very careful with the recommendations made online. Um, you can't trust them. So she understands that. Um, well, we hope she understands that. Uh, and we've also made it very clear for her that if she wants to carry out any of those pranks, then, then let us know, right? Let, let her mom know or myself know that if she wants to carry that out on some another family member um, so that we can make sure it's something safe that she can do. So, so I, think, I think that's something you've got to be very careful. Cyberbullying is a very, very um, um, concerning topic for parents. Absolutely. Wow, that's a, that's a fantastic point that you bring up. And, you know, the number of um, cybersecurity events I've been to uh, where we would have some, you know, somebody talk about how they were victimized and what um, steps they're taking now to to make other people aware. So that's that's fantastic. And, you know, in your role, you're obviously uh, impacting your daughter's life, but also, you know, hopefully that's... Um, that's broadening in your in your network and in her network, which is which is fantastic. So, mm -hmm. great job on that. Um, hey, uh, just just uh, I just wanted to pick your brains on something else. Sure. Zero trust, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of conversation around zero trust and the technology, and um, you know how organisations are taking it up. Um, there's a lot of benefits to it, right? Um, security, of of course, security. Um, all organizations would have to think about a layered security approach and zero trust just adds to that uh, approach. Um, if, if we were to humanize it, zero trust, um, what's zero trust from a user's point of view and, and what's the impact of zero trust to a user? Sure. So, so, um, so when we look at zero trust, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a model. It's, it's a, it's a blueprint or a, a, an approach to cybersecurity, right? And what we're trying to do is basically, um, in some ways, cybersecurity is quite a complex topic. So and there's many different aspects to it. So we've, what they've done is they've basically taken a number of different pillars. And one of those pillars is, is users. And, and really, when we look at this particular pillar, it's really all about, about um, how do we 
enforce policies that um, that are based on users rather than based on static IP addresses, for example, of of the of the days gone by. So so it's being able to have very very granular policy, um, being able to have policies that follow a user. That's really what um, what what it's all about. But but when I often talk about about, about zero trust or even about just uh, cyber security uh, to business, I like to um, and many people do this. They talk about uh, people, process, and technology, and so it's really important when you're implementing these types of policies, these technologies that 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 allow you to have these granular policies that you keep in mind um, the users, right? How, how simple you can make the process for the users. If, if, it, if the technology that you're going to implement is going to be too difficult, people will find ways around it. And that's the last thing you want, right? You want to make it seamless so that, so that people don't even think about it and you educate the users once and, and, and where you go. I'll give you an example of that. So here at Checkpoint, for example, we have our DLP solution. And, uh, and just a couple of days ago, I was trying to send a, um, a document to to a partner, and the document was actually flagged by our our DLP solution. Now, now um, I, I have two options here, right? One is to um, to try and find another way around it, or, or to adhere to the com corporate policy. Luckily for us at Checkpoint, we have a technology called User Check. So as soon as an email is quarantined, I get an email back saying, "Hey." This email is being quarantined. Uh, you're violating company policy because you're sending X, Y, Z, whatever it might be. Um, can you provide a justification for why this should be sent? And so I have that now the ability to, uh, to pr provide a justification and actually release that um, the, the content, the, the quarantine content automatically by myself without any intervention from anyone else. What this allows us to do is, is make sure that we have a very robust DLP policy mm -hmm. that everyone adheres to. And everyone understands that that if I am releasing documents um, that's being recorded, that's being logged, and if I'm doing something that's malicious, then that can be used against me. Mm -hmm. Whilst, uh, and, but if I'm doing something where I need that email to be sent with the document to be sent because it's part of my job, it's what I do, then then it's okay. I'll be able to justify that. So that's just one really simple way that Checkpoint has allowed um, allowed us to to implement a technology that is focused on users and it's quite granular yeah no that's a fantastic example right um where you know checkpoint it has the data loss prevention solution in place mm -hmm. um but if something's going on looks suspicious it's still asking the user to say hey do you really want to do it and you know you all the users would have done some sort of a compliance cybersecurity kind of training so they know they understand you know it's it's an action that they um are allowed to take uh, but making sure that they also understand that it is being logged and it is adding that extra layer of security so that's uh, that's a fantastic example thanks for sharing no problem yeah, well, thank you very much for your time um, uh, with me today, Ashwin. Um, uh, you know, thanks for sharing what's top of mind when it comes to data security, especially we had, um, you know, we covered ransomware to quite a depth, uh, plus, plus also zero trust from a user's point of view, what it means to users, who are, you know, keeping people um, on top of mind as well. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and, and highlighting the, the cyber bullying that's, that's around and how parents are concerned and what they can do as well. So I would definitely follow up with you to, uh, to see if, you know, your, your daughter do, does actually partner up with you and your wife to, <laughs> to prank somebody else. I would, I would love to hear that story someday. <laughs> well, she's a six year old and she's a very cheeky six year old. I am sure. I am sure. Um, well, on that note, thank you, Ashwin. Uh, and I'll speak to you soon. And thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.